Hey everyone, today we're gonna be seeing if I can get more energy out of my linear pendulum than I put into it. So I have a bunch of still balls here, just on this curved track. And this side is exactly as high as this side. First, let's see how long we can get one ball to rock back and forth on this. And stop. Now let's try two balls colliding. This is interesting how much worse this does than a regular pendulum. Notice how after only around two hits, they just kind of roll together. So two balls stopped a lot faster. If you compare that to a pendulum like this, watch what happens. They can go for a very long time like this. Each time they hit, the one on the right's momentum is completely transferred to the one on the left. So why aren't these balls bouncing like the pendulum? How do they lose so much momentum so fast? Well, the difference is because these are rolling. So as soon as I release the ball from above, it starts to roll. So some of its momentum immediately begins to get turned into angular momentum. So this is actually really interesting to look at in slow motion. Notice how when the moving ball strikes the stationary ball, suddenly the moving ball becomes stopped and the stationary ball starts moving. But then after a little bit of time, the ball that hit it eventually starts rolling again. What happened is this ball starts rolling it hit this one and transferred all of its linear momentum to the stationary ball, so that ball starts moving. But then because this ball still had angular momentum, it's still rolling, the angular momentum rolls it forward still. So this is kind of a way where you can separate out its linear momentum from its angular momentum based on rolling. The reason this is happening is because of something called conservation of momentum. Let's see if momentum is conserved no matter how many balls I put on. Works for three, try four. Also four. Okay, now let's try five. Started at the block. Whoa, it went off the block. How did that happen? Let's try that again. What? <laughs> okay, maybe this isn't exactly level. I'm gonna take this block off. Now let's see, I'm just gonna give it barely a push. Whoa. <laughs> It's because one of these balls is not like the other ones. This one is actually a magnet. So this one's a magnet, these two are regular steel balls, and this is a regular steel ball. If you do that, something interesting happens. You end up with more momentum in the ball that shot off of it than the initial ball had coming into it. So if I prepare two of them in a row like this, this ball coming off here is going to go faster than the initial ball that hit it, and then it's going to hit here, and this one will come off even faster than that one. So it will continually accelerate. Whoa! <laughs> now I'm losing some momentum because the balls ricochet back, so I'm gonna stop that by taping them down a little bit. And the faster I start off with it going, the more momentum it's gonna end up with. Give it a little toss to start with. <laughs> Whoa! So where is all this extra momentum coming from if I start my ball softly on this end, barely push it, and it ends up hitting my hand really hard on the other side? Well, the answer is it didn't gain any extra energy. It actually had the energy here, but it was stored as potential energy instead of kinetic energy. Just like if I hold this ball up in the air, it seems like it has no energy, and it suddenly gains energy when I drop it. That's because the energy was stored as potential energy here. So I lifted it up in a gravitational field, and so I gave it potential energy so that it can move and pick up kinetic energy. So it didn't gain any energy across the whole time that it was moving. The same thing is happening here. The balls aren't gaining energy. In fact, overall, if you measured the total energy between the first ball and the last ball, the last ball would have less energy than the one I just barely started rolling at the first. So it's easy to remember that when you lift something up against gravity, you gave it energy, but you kind of forget about it when you deal with magnets. That's one of the reasons why magnets are usually involved in perpetual motion machine claims, because they never account for the energy that you had to give the initial thing to put it into that magnetic field. For example, I built here a simple magnetic over unity toy. People sometimes call these SMOTs, S-M-O-T. And by over unity, they claim that they get more energy out of it than they put into it. What I have is on either side of the track, magnets facing like this. They're tilted on one side towards the track. So the ball is attracted towards the end that is pointed towards the track more, so it sucks it into it. 
For example, I have my track here. I can barely start my ball moving. Then watch how fast it ends up moving. Set it right here, no movement. And it shoots off the end of it. Unlike my other setup where I had to replace the balls and put it in front of the magnet, with this one I don't have to replace anything. So why couldn't I just put a bunch of smots in a circle and I could continually accelerate my ball? And this can even go slightly uphill. I'm gonna put this wedge under it. Now if I don't let the ball fall off the end, watch what happens. It gets sucked back into it. So it has to drop off the end to escape the magnetic field. And if it can drop off the end, then it can keep rolling. So what if you just set a bunch of these up in a circle where one is raised and then it rolls back up another ramp and then drops off again and rolls back up another ramp and drops off again. This has been a way to claim potential energy for a lot of years. People have tried to make smots that go in a circle all the way around and keep the loop going so a ball can just continually accelerate faster and faster. But it turns out nobody's ever been able to do it. And it's really easy to see why now. Your ball is never gonna end up with more energy than it started with because of friction. So if you had two of these in a row, the ball could never get up to high enough point to drop off the edge of the next one. You could only do it if you continually lowered the next one progressively down more and more and more. But then you're just using the potential energy that you put the ball in through the gravitational field to accelerate it. So again, there's no such thing as free energy. I've seen countless videos online of people always claiming to connect some series of magnets in a row so that you could get a continually moving ball. But they always come to the same conclusion. No matter what, their track isn't quite right and if they try to do a full loop, it doesn't work. Except for the ones that fake it, then it always works. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a channel similar to this one where I do my videos in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.